Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Today on Ask the Messengers, our topic is heroin addiction, recovery, and prevention. Our guests include Maxine Willis, a certified prevention specialist specializing in youth drug prevention. Edward, a U.S. military veteran who returned home from Vietnam addicted to heroin and who has remained drug-free for the last 28 years. And Dennis, who has been drug-free for 14 and a half years, will tell us how peer pressure at the age of 16 helped him start to use heroin. LaShawn, our very own street reporter who was addicted to drugs, will tell her true story about chasing the dragon. And finally, Dr. Iffy will define drug addiction and discuss some of its main causes. It's all here on this episode of Ask the Messengers. And now, here's your host, Pastor Lester Lewis. Welcome to the show. Uh, this show is exactly what the name says. Uh, it is real people sharing a real message. Uh, in fact, uh, it was said that, uh, that your mess can become your message. And so uh, they're sharing, and these are not actors, these are not paid uh, performers, these are individuals who actually live the lives and, and have a story to tell behind it. And, uh, one of our topics today is drug addiction and the recovery process. Uh, so we're going to be talking to a few uh, of, of, of our, our strong individuals who are in recovery, uh, and they are former heroin addicts uh, who will share their stories about their addiction and how it affected their families and much more. So, uh, listen, I want to go right into some questions. And if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to start. Edward, listen, l l what made you begin using heroin? Well, Pastor, at the time I was 18 in Southeast Asia, scared, and uh, just thought God had forsake me. And uh, that's where it started for me. And um, I just thank God today that I'm clean and I'm here with you guys discussing the fact that, you know, who's ever out there doesn't have to use. Amen. Well, we're glad to see you because uh, I heard it said that I'd rather be seen than viewed any day. Amen. Amen. All right. So listen, also, uh, uh, let's, I, I, Dennis, I just got to I just got to know, um, listen, what, what made you begin using? Uh, I started using at the age of I started using at the age of 16. It was Peer Pressure Association. Uh, uh, filing, filing other people that I didn't know uh, uh, that were getting high, and I thought it was fun, but it didn't last long. <laughs> mm, all right, all right. So listen, let me go back, Edward. How how how, how did how did your heroin use uh, affect your family, uh, your family members, and 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 those your friends and coworkers and that all that good stuff? How did it affect them? Well, Pastor, that didn't start until after I had come back from Vietnam and. Uh, you know, I come out of Colorado State. That's where I graduated. I started uh, really getting off into it heavily in the early 70s. And what ha adverse effects it had on them was the lying that I was doing, the manipulating, and most of all, the fact that I wasn't living up to the potential that they had set for me. All right. So, so now listen, uh, obviously, uh, when, when, when you uh, were, were using and, and it, it became a part of your life, uh, and we've heard some, some, some horrifying stories about how uh, people and individuals, uh, they went through some things. Uh, let me ask you this, this question, uh, Dennis. Uh, have you ever had a horrifying experience as a result of your heroin use? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. Uh, I remember uh, uh, doing some drugs, and, and the reaction to the drugs had me paranoid, and I was uh, tripping, almost losing my mind. I thought I would never gain it back. Uh, 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 I started uh, uh, rationalizing and, and, and running around, acting crazy, and it scared me to death. One thing, though, no, uh, you try to justify that it was just the wrong drugs, you know, but it's no right drugs, you right, know. Right. It's no right way to use. Okay. Now, listen, I don't want to, I certainly don't want to leave her out of the conversation. Uh, LaShawn, listen, uh, uh, obviously from a woman's perspective, uh, because it's not just men is addicted, women are addicted as well. Uh, listen, have you, did you ever have a horrifying experience uh, as you were using? Uh, yes, but heroin wasn't my drug of choice. 
crack was, but I did try heroin, and it was very brief. It didn't take long for me to get sick. When I tried it, I was following some people. They had uh, called it Chasing the Dragon, where they mixed the heroin and the crack together and smoke it. And what happened was the next day I woke up so sick that um, I was throwing up everywhere, didn't know what had happened to me. And um, <clears throat> I said I would never do that again. I see. I started praying to God, Lord, please help me get through this. Listen, we got more coming up. Listen, uh, don't don't go anywhere. We've got some. We got a, a great testimony for you. Watch this. We'll be right back. Uh, it affected my family uh, by uh, well, currently I'm separated from my wife and my children. Um, uh, I lost their trust. I've scared my family. Um, some of them have turned their backs on me and disowned me. And I'm just now uh, building relationships back. My family didn't trust me. Uh, they always uh, kind of, I mean, they just didn't trust me. It was just a distrust there. And they was always, didn't want me around because I was always high. But whatever the case is, is that once you get into it, it tend to escalate because you don't know when to stop. Because the way we are, are defined addiction is that it's a behavioral thing. It's not just a pharmacological or a physical dependent on the drug. It's also that, but it's when your behavior is preventing you, you could not pull back. It's disrupting your, your livelihood. It's disrupting your family. But you keep using, whether it's the prescription medication or the uh, illicit drug. You don't know when to, that's what we call addiction. So addiction is both physical dependent on the, on the drugs, which is physical dependence is that if you stop to use, you become sick, which is you have nausea, that you feel like throwing up, you have diarrhea, you have sweating, you have difficulty sleeping, especially with the opioids. You have all these symptoms, ache, muscle ache, that tells your body, I need this medication. Listen, Dennis, uh, i got a question for you. Uh, because I know there's some people out there listening and, and obviously they, they, they may be in recovery or looking to get in recovery. Uh, can you tell us and talk about your recovery process? I mean, because I think the best story is your story. Uh, the recovery process. And, and did you ever relapse? Uh, yes, I, 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 I relapsed one time. I was uh, clean from 72 to 83. And I happened to be working at... Uh, I went through Harvard like they had a motivational program back then. NA, as far as I know, didn't start up in the Salvation Army got it in seventy four and I went to school, became a counselor, was working down there and and what I found was was the ultimate weapon is God and another recovering addict, <laughs> you know, in the program. And uh after relapsing, you know, I got an opportunity to, because we used to hold meetings back in 74 for NA, you know, just started taking off from my point of view in the 80s. But uh, after I relapsed, I was introduced to uh, to NA again through my brother. He was sponsoring me and some other people. And uh, uh, just my, my, my personal experience, yeah, when you relapse, you know, there ain't no wrong way to get clean. It just ain't no right way to use. All right. All right. You know. Well, look, Dennis, obviously what you just said is, is so important. I think uh, what you said is that, you know, to, you, you can't do it by yourself. Right. Uh, right. That, that, that you, you need help. You need help. Uh, and, and, and or if you want to do it and do it right, you got to make sure that you, you get some help. And so, Edward, listen, I, I also want to ask uh, of you, sir, uh, did you have any friends? Because I know that there's a lot of people, uh, and, and you, we, we're the blessed ones who are still here, uh, but have you had any friends that use heroin or other drugs and, and that did not make it? Yes. 
<clears throat> I had quite a few friends uh, overseas that used and didn't make it back to the to the world as we used to call it. Then upon coming back here, there were times when we would use with uh, various people, and uh, they would get high and. Uh, but they weren't actually friends, they were acquaintances, you know. To me, a friend wouldn't want another friend hurting himself, mm. you know what I'm saying? Right. But, right. you know, th through drug addiction, you know, it's a real painful area, you know, th for the individual and then for th for their families. All right. All right. Back to that, Dennis. Uh, I, look, did you try to hide your addiction? And, and I think this is, I think this kind of goes without saying because uh, there, there are many, uh, I heard that there are many addicts among us that, and, and, and because they're hiding in plain sight. Uh, did you ever try to hide your addiction from, uh, from family and friends? Uh, always, mm -hmm. always, you know. I mean, you, you have to hide it because disease of addiction is total self-centeredness. And if somebody knew you were using, of course you wasn't going to get a loan or any money or anything else, let alone maybe let it in the house. Remember, I started using at 15 years old, 15, 16 years old. And I remember the riots back then. And I remember losing some friends back then. I had a friend get killed up on Kenilworth, one old D. There was six of us. I'm the only one kind of left out of that. The rest of them died in some form of drug addiction. And I think about that today, and that gives me motivation and gratitude to stay clean. And it also keeps me going, too. But, uh, yeah, you, you, you try to hide it. I remember when the big four used to stop us. I was 16, and they would look at your arms and whoop you. Now, now, let, now let me ask you this real, real, real <laughs> quick, tracks. real quick, because guess what? There, there's there's some people I know this is gonna sound gonna sound funny mm -hmm. who have no idea what the Big Four is. Can you explain what the Big Four? Well, what, well, what, the what, Big what, Four what was were. back with stress back on the north end and different back in the early back in the late '60s and early '70s, and the Big Four was like four police that would ride through the neighborhoods and stop you and search you and, and and they found something on you. I sat in the car one time and they had me in the middle and they seen the tracks and they went to whipping me with drumsticks. Mm. <laughs> and then they led me out in the middle of the street and told me thanks <laughs> for helping me. And then a guy told me, he said, you helping the police? I said, you think the police let you out in front of here if I was helping them? They'd be there, hid me down the street. Would you give me some credit? <laughs> all right, all right. Well, listen, uh, we want to certainly thank you guys so much, mm -hmm. Edward and, and, and Dennis, and, and, and thank you, LaShawn, for, for being on the show today. Uh, listen, we've got some, we got some great stuff happening. Uh, but listen, to, do not go anywhere. We're going to uh, talk later with a lady who has been an advocate for drug prevention uh, in the place where we, you, you probably least likely expected, uh, in our school system. That's right with our babies, with our children uh, in the educational realm. Uh, we're going to be right back. We've got more show coming. Uh, and, and again, thank you for your, your message. Thank you for your testimonies that you shared. And we just appreciate you. We'll be right back. Addiction is a serious business. Once you get over to that side, it's difficult to come back. So it doesn't respect people. Anybody can be addicted to any of these opioids and have a struggle. It's not because they are bad. It, the person is not a bad person. The person is not uh, is weak or not disciplined. It has nothing to do with any of this. How strong, how disciplined, pull yourself by the bootstrap or anything like that. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain that can take down anybody. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. Hi, I'm Ashley Greaser, the office manager at Premier Supportive Services. Here at Premier, we offer a variety of services that include residential service, 24-hour residential, attended care, semi-independent, as well as many other services. So if you know of anyone that has been involved in a car accident, we are located at 17555 James Cousin, Suite 2. Or you can give us a call at 313-345-3668. God's World, a Detroit institution that West 7 Mile and Schaefer says, get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, hide envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors, 
Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. Welcome back to Ask the Messengers. I am Pastor Lester Lewis, your host for the show. Uh, listen, we just got finished speaking and talking with some, uh, some great people here, uh, sharing their testimonies and their lives and what they've been through, uh, their ups, their downs, their goods, their bads, uh, but most, than, most of all, their recovery. Uh, and so uh, we are thankful for their story. Uh, but our next uh, guest, our next person that we have that we're going to speak with today, uh, we're going to be talking from the side of prevention, uh, talking about how we can educate and, and share information so that addiction uh, never comes into the picture. And so we have an advocate with us, uh, someone who is uh, advocating for drug prevention. Uh, listen, and she is advocating in the public schools, in the school system. Uh, that's right. I know you didn't think about that. It was the babies and the, and, and the school age. Uh, but yes, we, so she is here today, and her name is Maxine Willis. And uh, Maxine, how are you today? I am very excited to be part of this exciting show. All right. Well, listen, uh, I want everyone to know, Maxine, uh, if, if you're wondering, she's got over 30 years of experience. We're certainly not trying to date you now, <laughs> uh, but she's got 30 years. So, so she is a veteran at this thing. And, and so, listen, we want to uh, just get right into this. Listen, how did you get involved in the field of substance abuse prevention? Oh, let me see here. How can I make a long story short? <laughs> uh, I basically started out as a teacher, uh, as a matter of fact, a preschool teacher in the area where I was born and raised, which is a very rural farm area. And um, so I didn't really learn a lot about uh, uh, drugs and alcohol prevention. And moving later to the Detroit area, large urban area, began working with young people. It was at the beginning of that time that I was confronted with questions, concerns, and comments that young children had regarding alcohol and drugs. And as a young woman, as a young teacher, I didn't have a clue to how to answer a child who says, my daddy got drunk last night and he jumped on my mom and he blacked her eye. And the next day, my dad looked at my mom and said, who did that to you? And the little kid looks at me and says, my daddy is crazy, isn't he? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I wouldn't know what wow. to say. I don't wow. know. Wow. So... um these kind of experiences continue to happen in my work with young children. So I met a friend who introduced me to um, the National Council on Alcoholism. And I started there as a volunteer. I went back to school in alcohol and drug studies so that I could learn more about alcohol and other drugs. And as a young teacher, I made a vow with the help of God that if he allowed me the opportunity that I wanted to be a part of developing and creating a program that would help children at a very early age understand the dangers of drugs, gangs, and violence, and also to educate teachers and other health care providers so that no one finds themselves in the situation as I did as a teacher and didn't know how to respond. All right. So it looks it looks like your 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 field of expertise came out of necessity. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Listen. So, so what organizations uh, have you worked with, Maxine, uh, 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 with that it relates to uh, prevention? What organizations have you been involved? Oh with? my goodness, I've worked. Uh, again, I've been in the field of prevention since 1979. Oh, wow. Helped to co-create one of the first prevention programs in the country aimed at preschool age children called Babes, wow. beginning alcohol basic education addiction studies. And that program. Uh, we were at that time from 1981, uh, uh, ABC World News Tonight found out what we were doing here with preschool age children. And they yes. thought, what do you say to young kids yeah. about alcohol right. and drugs? Right. But we created like a Sesame Street type model with puppet yeah. songs and yeah. stories, helping yeah. children understand uh, how to feel good about themselves. So we, this program, again, took me into many schools throughout the Tri-County area. As a matter of fact, traveled throughout the country, training not only with children, but training others in how to use this model. So it was like being part of a dream that came true. All right. Well, listen, I, obviously it, it is, you know, I think that many people don't really realize that uh, that children are, are almost the collateral damage of Absolutely. Of, of drug uh, abuse and, and, and what can, can occur as a result of that. Uh, and so why is this so important? Because obviously this is a passion of yours. It but, but certainly why, is. Why is this so important to uh, start prevention efforts at 
such a young age? Well, first of all, at ages four, five, and six, children are just developing their own attitudes and ideas about themselves and the world around them. Mm -hmm. At no other time in a child's life is their brain going to be able to absorb information. So at that stage, you know, a lot of times people thought, are you bombarding them with facts about alcohol and right, drugs? Right, right. But that wasn't the case at all. It's just starting at an early age, helping children develop social skills, helping them with their communication skills. Even the research says that when you develop programs that are interactive, participatory, helping young people to accept the things they cannot change and change the things that they can. Mm. It's basically mm. wow. helping them to understand the world around them, how to, how to develop coping skills to understand that there are things in life that happen to us that we can't change. So it's just a matter of helping them develop a solid foundation about who they are in the world around them. All right. So listen, Maxine, can you give us some, some examples? Because I, because you get me excited. I, <laughs> I, I want to sit in the class. Can you give us some examples of some of the activities that you that you participate with the, the young children with uh, as it relates to prevention? Absolutely. Well, you know, we have programs like, you know, uh, Mirror, Mirror on the Wall, where kids look in the mirror, say positive things about themselves. Uh, my husband is a music producer, so we created all kinds of songs. I love myself. Give yourself a hug. Dan the Dinosaur says don't do drugs. It's helping children to understand how important our body is. We have body parts with the heart and, and the brain. They all talk to each other, and they talk about what happens to them when people abuse alcohol. We, we try to stay factual and non-judgmental in helping children to understand how drugs affect the body, but what they can do to give themselves that everlasting good feeling that no drug ever can. All right. Well, listen, so, so what can parents and or, and or caregivers do uh, to help prevent their children from turning uh, to drugs as a, as a as an outlet. One of the things that we created was called the self-esteem camp and we encourage children and families. One of the things that I'm so excited about now and all of my work and working with children but now I'm focusing on parent-child interactive activities and the greatest thing parents can do is first of all is just to create a caring loving en environment. Our programs teach parents that you are your child's greatest prevention partner. Oh, right. Telling oh, right. that right. Child, that I love you, that I may not like everything that you do, but there's nothing you can do to stop me from loving you. Right. Talk with our children, yeah. encourage them to communicate, build their self-esteem, give them experiences that will help them feel good about who they are. All right. Boy, I am excited right now. I tell you, I, I, I want to keep going, but we've got to stop for just a moment. Listen, we, 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 I want you to stay tuned, uh, but we've got some words coming up for you uh, here. And, and, and so come on back. Call a friend. Tell somebody. Tune in to Ask the Messengers. The person at this point might be able to stop, but when you go over to what we call addiction, it's when you're using to your own destruction and you cannot stop. You lose your house, you lose your job, you're homeless, you can't pay your bills, none of your family members want you around, you still cannot stop. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. God's World. A Detroit institution at West Seven Mile in Schaefer says, get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, pie envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors. Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. Hi, I'm Ashley Greaser, the Office Manager at Premier Supportive Services. Here at Premier, we offer a variety of services that include residential service, 24-hour residential, attended care, semi-independent, as well as many other services. So if you know of anyone that has been involved in a car accident, we are located at 17555 James Cousins, Suite 2, or you can give us a call at 313-345-3668.
Pastor Lewis here. We're back with Ask the Messengers and with our guest uh, right now, Maxine Willis. And uh, Maxine, we've got just a few minutes, and we want to share. I uh, want to ask you uh, about the, uh, the the importance of community in the whole effort of uh, keeping and preventing children from from turning to drugs. Can you can you share some of that information with Absolutely. us, please? Absolutely. For many years, again, I've worked in what you know, going into the schools, going into uh, uh, boys and girls clubs and these sorts of things. But you know, they say it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. So it's important that not only we provide school-based prevention and home prevention, but community-wide prevention. Mm -hmm. That they say it takes a village to raise a child, but the village is sick. The village needs to be right, healed. Right, right. So we have to provide awareness to the village, and that's what I'm excited about, and that's what my focus is on now. How do we create happy, healthy communities, one family one block at a time so that children can grow and be happy safe and free from drugs gangs and violence all right now i don't want you to get out of here without asking <laughs> asking you this question uh in, in 81 you did a a say no to drugs puppet show for uh for former first lady nancy reagan how did oh. that how did that feel oh it, it it was just surreal it was just an one of the most exciting opportunities and the experience that i'll never forget all right well listen thank you so much for being on the thank show and, and we appreciate you so much and listen to all of you who are watching and, and, and tuning in uh, listen this show uh, absolutely if, if this this here is is absolutely necessary uh, it is because our children are also being a, a part of what's going on uh, and so even though they may not be using uh, they also are affected by uh, those who are using and abusing drugs so uh, we want to just ask you and, and certainly in your heart uh, and, and search your search yourself and, and, and ask uh, how can I help? Maybe you maybe you can't get out in the street. Maybe you don't have the voice to speak publicly. Uh, but but you can you can sow a seed or you can give uh, to the effort in which as the messengers is uh, doing. Uh, you can send that that any any um, a gift of any amount. Uh, you can go online or you can do it by what they call snail mail. Uh, send a check or a money order uh, for uh, just uh, just say just saying. I want to help in some way, tangibly, uh, and, and no gift is too small, and certainly no 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 gift is too large. Uh, we absolutely need your help to stay on the air and to keep programming like this coming. So listen, uh, today uh, we have talked with uh, individuals who were uh, dealing with uh, the re in recovery, and then we also talked about the prevention side, and, and, and especially for our children. Uh, and we just want you to know that no matter what area of life uh, that you come from, drugs can affect you in some type of way. Uh, but we also know uh, that uh, we pray, our prayer is that, uh, you would find a God of your own understanding that would help you to find that place of peace. Thank you so much for tuning in to Ask the Messengers. And until we meet again, I'm Pastor Lester Lewis. We'll see you soon.